I don't know what the hell that sound like. Probably hell, but it's fun. Ha! <laughs> it's fun to play this dime. This dime is a badass guitar. Badass. I mean, you can go and get the uh, Dean Bolt that looks exactly like his. It doesn't play good. This is the best playing dime guitar out there. Guaranteed. I don't care what anybody says. Look at the neck. It's not, it's got friggin' binding. It's a nice guitar, dude. And chicks. This is a very, very nice guitar. The only thing I had to put on was the stickers. The And I, I don't know why I put that on, but it fits, so it stays. Um, I put these on, and I got the... When I was running, when I was playing in a band, and I had this, I don't know how many years ago, I was running wireless, so I'd plug it in back here, and then run the pack, you know, on my uh, strap, so it looked like I didn't have a cord. I thought it was cool at the time. So, what did I say? Listen to the new Motley Crue song, Like a Virgin. And next Friday, the movie's out on Netflix, so you'll all be watching it, right? Right. No one wants me to give up any of the movie, right? Because I've seen it four times. I think... I think most people will like it. Most real Motley Crue fans that started back when I did like in 81 in the very beginning are gonna cringe at some stuff but if you know Nikki you'll understand why it happened he thinks he's got a certain image to uphold as the most bad ass crazy rock and roll dude ever and then he's this teenage runaway that has had a really hard life and lived on the streets and listen. Eh. You know, there's part, his mom was a, dad wasn't around. His grandparents raised him. As soon as they got hold of him, they raised him very well. He, he, he's not the idiot that he wants everybody to think he is like this, you know, guy that can't spell. Because he used to, you know, whatever. 
he's not that whacked out. But he wants people to think that, you know, he's a runaway and he came to Hollywood to make... You know how many people ran away from home at 18 to come to Hollywood to make it? Everybody I almost played with. Almost. Everybody that was in a band of mine, except for Tony, my bass player. He lived right over there in North Hollywood. Everybody else was from somewhere. All over the world. So, who cares? He came from Idaho and Seattle down. The punk thing, he just, I don't know where this comes from. Maybe because his hair was sticking up, he thought he was being punk rock. But he knew he wasn't. He was copying uh, the guy from the New York Dolls. The, that's who he was trying to look like. Was the guitar player, I can't think of his name. Thunders, Johnny Thunders from New York Dolls. He even admits it a few times, long time ago, when he was honest. He was totally in the metal. He liked Bowie and, and Alice Cooper and the same things everybody liked. Like the same things I liked. I like, you know, grew up with Elton John and, you know, all these other influences. And then the metal kicked in. You know, we got Kiss. Most, you know, in our generation, he's, you know, what, born in 58? He's like 60, right? I'm younger than him. I'm a few years younger than Tommy. And we all were inspired by the same thing. I know it because I used to talk to him. And when I went in after like their second or third show, and me and my friend got backstage, they were nothing, but they were still selling out the club. I mean, it was, I can't remember which club it was, if it was the Whiskey or the Roxy. I got backstage, and there was nobody there, no girls. It was just, you know, Nicky, you know, taking off his clothes and, well, you know, just changing into his uh, street clothes, and Mick was just sitting there. And I thought Mick was cool. And my friend, we were scared. So I pulled this ticket out someone gave me, a Troubadour ticket, a blue one, and I gave it to Mick. I said, can I have your autograph? And everybody just was silent. He's like, you want my autograph? I go, dude, you're, good. you're like the next kiss. He goes, oh, no. And Nikki's like, yeah. He goes, no, F kiss. This is Mick. I go, or Alice Cooper. He goes, okay, that I like. And Nikki's like, or that. Both are great. I'm like, both are great mix like Alice Cooper. He goes, so, wow, this is my first Mick Mars autograph. I'm like, you're kidding me. He goes, no. I, now why would I make that up? I could make it up. It's true, though. I got one friend to back it up, and I think Robin Crosby was standing there, but he's dead. <laughs> and if, you know, that's it. So he signed, uh, what, two Mike... Keep rocking, make Mars. I got to dig the ticket up because it's got the date of the Troubadour thing, so it, you know, it all jives. And that was it. From then on, Mick let me and my friend backstage every single show they played that we were at, every single one. And then I started working for Alan Kaufman, doing promo, putting up posters, passing out flyers, shirts, buttons. 45s when the album came out he sent me everything so I got everything they ever put out in the beginning so I you know I'm kind of into it you know it's making me you know kind of you know want to go back in time this movie a little bit I mean because they do a good job at taking you back to that feeling of the early 80s because it was it was crazy I mean Motley Crue, of course, was coming out. Van Halen had come out a few years before, but they'd already kind of, you know, David Lee Roth was milling around, you know, picking up chicks at, at the shows, Motley Crue's. But, uh, you know, Randy Rhodes was still in Ozzy, so we had Randy out there making it big. Van Halen was huge. You know, they were. And, uh... <laughs> And now Motley Crue, I just knew was going to be huge. And then all these other bands came, started coming in. Rat and 
friggin' Wasp later in like 84 or 3, 4. Can't remember when Wasp jumped in, but it was like Motley Crue, bam, rat, out, Wasp, bam. They just, bands kept getting thrown out there, you know, and they all made it fairly big, except for Dokken, because rockin' with Dokken, uh, suckin' dickin'. You know, they just weren't that type of arena band. They never just, they never, believe me, I saw them open for everybody, Rat and Motley Crue a ton of times. They just didn't have that, what it what it took to be a huge band, but they got pretty big. And a lot of people like George Lynch, and I'm not going to battle it. Um, but, ah, see, I'm talking a lot now. So there you go. That's what I got to say for today. <laughs> Subscribe, like, comment, comment. I'm serious. Write something, anything. Why not? Do it. Comment and subscribe, please. We gotta get to a thousand so I can move on with this. Gotta got gotta start getting monetized. Or what's the use? It's kind of fun, but when I make videos and people don't even comment on them. What the hell's the point? If you're just going to watch them and go, thanks, but say, cool, nice guitar, that was neat, maybe anything, well, squirrels up my ass, whatever, comment, say something, please, and have a nice night, eh, good weekend. I'll be making a walkumentary on the strip coming up, just me and a friend of mine walking down the strip talking about crap that's coming up because that's going to be fuel for this uh, friggin documentary that's coming out on Michael D. Rock Legend that's me it is <laughs> come on you guys keep going thanks for watching comment, subscribe, lates have a good weekend